Uh, so good afternoon, everyone. I'm Russell Lai. Uh, so today I will present Phoenix, which is a brand new password hardening service. So this is a joint work with Christoph Egger, uh, Dominic Schroeder, and uh, Sherman Chow. So uh, we will split the talk, this talk into two parts. I will first take care of the uh, scheme design, and Christoph will take care of the evaluation and deployment issues. So password authentication has been around uh, for a while. And in the old days, the service providers just store the password in plain text. And to log in, the end user will say, OK, I'm Alice, and my password is 123456. And the database would just check whether the provider password is equal to the stored password. So obviously, storing the password in plain text is not a very good idea. So later, people uh, replace it with sorted hash. So now, uh, instead of checking whether the provider password is the same, it, uh, the server or the database performs a sorted hash on the provider password and check whether it is the same with the record. OK, so, but, so this approach has been around for a while, and uh, it is still uh, used today by many service providers. But we see two major problems in this approach. The first problem is on the user side, that is, uh, users tend to choose weak passwords. So we have heard of this for many times, but uh, please forgive me that I need to repeat. So uh, there is a survey done by uh, Teams ID in 2016, uh, who's discovered that 4% of users uh, use 123456 as their passwords, and 25% of users use the top 25 first passwords. So, OK, we all know this, and we often laugh at the users uh, of choosing these bad passwords. But we also know that these users are stubborn and will not uh, choose, or, may, or we cannot hope many of them to choose stronger passwords, not to mention using crypto them themselves. OK, so the other side of the problem is in the uh, server side. So uh, recently, a lot of uh, Password databases got stolen, and here is a list of recent recent breaches found from Wiki. So, for example, as you can see, in 2013, Yahoo lost about uh, one billion passwords, and in the next year, it, it loses another half billion. So, and according to IBM, each of these uh, 1.5 billion passwords cost Yahoo. Uh, 141 bucks. So, okay, so maybe, maybe these service providers have the incentives at least financially to change. And Facebook certainly do. So they uh, recently they proposed this uh, password hardening service, although informally, but uh, the academic community quickly realized this is a good idea and uh, the PVR paper two years ago uh, gave, a, gave a formal treatment, but I will get into that later. So the idea of password hardening service is that instead of storing a sorted hash, the database will instead store a ciphertext of the password. So to validate, so now I will introduce another entity called the crypto server. And to distinguish between the login server and the crypto server, I would just call the a login server, a client of the crypto service, OK? So in, to verify this password, instead of running the verification algorithm, uh, it instead runs a verification protocol. So how it works, it first uh, informs the server that user Alice is trying to log in, and then they jointly uh, verify whether this cybertext is a valid cybertext for the password. So here are some key features of password hardening schemes. First of all, uh, it is seamless to the end user. So in the end user's point of view, it, uh, they own, still only send the usernames and passwords. So they do not need to change anything. And this extra entity, the crypto server, will not learn anything about the password. Next, uh, since now these passwords are encrypted into ciphertext, even if a, an attacker compromised 
this database, even learning the secret key of the uh, client, cannot decrypt this ciphertext by itself. So in this way, we eliminate all offline attacks. So the only way to uh, guess the password is to perform an online attack uh, by interacting with the server. But, it, okay, so it may try to guess whether the password is all zero, QWERTY, uh, ASDFGH, but then after a server requests the server will perform rate limiting and uh, deny any further validation request. So in this way, we uh, this notion mitigate online attacks. But all these features are rather easy to achieve if we do not consider the next feature that I'm going to uh, describe, that is key rotation. So here, key rotation is a very important property that allows uh, to update both keys if either party is compromised. So for example, here, when the client is compromised, uh, the client and the server can work together to uh, rotate the keys so as to bring the whole system into a fresh state. And in this way, they get rid of the adversary who might know some previous parts, uh, previous database or secret keys. And furthermore, the client can update its ciphertext without knowing the user passwords. So again, it, the whole thing, the whole backend infrastructure is seamless to the end user. So obviously, we uh, this external crypto server is quite important to this uh, notion. So let's take a closer look. Um, I emphasize, we emphasize that it is important that for the crypto server to generate its key independently of the client so that you, me, and any third company or organization can set up their crypto server and share it as a service. And also, since the key is independent of the client, uh, one server can uh, serve multiple clients without any problem. Next, uh, this crypto server will store very minimal information. Concretely, it only stores one secret key per client and one counter per uh, end user just to perform rate limiting. And this counter may even be deleted after the current time interval. And lastly, this crypto server can uh, be split into multiple servers uh, so as to reduce the trust placed on them. And we plan to do this in a future work. So there are quite, uh, there are several similar notions uh, which try to also try to distribute the task of verifying passwords uh, to multiple servers, but they are different in several key features. The first four strands in this list is uh, distributed password verification, and the key difference here is that they require joint key generation between the client and server, and the rate limiting is only done at the server side, uh, at the, sorry, at the client side. So it means that if the client is compromised, the server cannot uh, help to mitigate online attacks. The next one, which is uh, a famous line of work, is password authenticated key exchange or password protected secret sharing. So here the key difference is that these servers need to store a secret share per end user. So when compared to us, we only store uh, one counter per end user. And also, all existing PEG or PPSS schemes either does not support key rotation or is very inefficient. So, so as I've said before, password hardening was informally introduced by Facebook, but uh, the first formal treatment was given by uh, Everspaw, Chatterjee's, Scott, Jewels and uh, recent part in Usenix two years before. But instead of formalizing password hardening, they formalized another crypto primitive called the password, sorry, the partially oblivious pseudorandom function and proposed to use it as uh, for password hardening service. And they gave a construction called PVR, which is based on pairing. So pairing is in today's standard quite an efficient operation, but it is not uh, as efficient as we can hope for. So one year later, Schneider, Fleischhacker, uh, Schroeder, and Bacchus 
uh, propose yet another crypto primitive called uh, partially oblivious commitment or POCOM and suggest to use it for password tunneling as well. But as we show in our paper, the security definitions is actually too weak for password hardening because they do not cover online attacks. But nevertheless, they provide a construction which does not use pairing, so it's more efficient, actually, is two times faster than PPA when used for password hardening. So finally, it, here comes our work. So notice that in previous work, uh, this paper only formalized another crypto primitive and use it to uh, perform password hardening, but they do not formalize password, hard password hardening itself. So we fill this gap by formalizing password hardening itself, and this is done by revisiting and strengthening the model given by Schneider et al. And next, although uh, key rotation is a very important property, uh, previous, uh, previous work actually didn't uh, formalize this notion. So uh, without a rigorous understanding, it may be the case that uh, the previous schemes are secure without queue rotation, but after the queue rotation is broken. So uh, to avoid this uh, danger, we've jumped in and also formalized queue rotation. Next, we describe two devastating attacks against the scheme of Schneider et al. The first scheme enables offline dictionary attack after just one validation request. And the second attack even extracts the password after also one validation request. So this completely defeats the purpose of the external crypto server. So we emphasize that their scheme, although their scheme is provably secure, but the security definition is simply too weak to cover this, uh, these attacks. And finally, we propose a, an extremely simple construction of cost before pairing. And it is so simple that it is easy to understand, easy to implement, and it's very possible that it can be put to real world use. And of course, we have proven uh, this scheme secure under our strengthened security model, but we do not make any compromise in the efficiency. In fact, our scheme is 50% faster than the scheme of Schneider et al. and three times faster than PVR. So let me explain our scheme now. But uh, so of course I will describe a slightly simplified uh, variant here and the actual scheme in the paper is a little bit different. So we start with, uh, we start from the usual sorted hash uh, mechanism as uh, used today. So the first thing to enhance security is to replace the hash function by a pseudorandom function so that instead of protecting the, the entire database, the client only protects its secret key. But then we assume this secret key may be stolen by the attacker when it compromises the client. So we introduce this crypto server who will compute another PIF value, but only on the username and the random server nodes. So the client will multiply these two PR values together and store it uh, as the uh, record for the password. And as the final step, we encrypt this product of PR values to the server. So to instantiate this scheme uh, such that it satisfies all the key features that I've mentioned, we require that the encryption scheme is homomorphic and the PRF is key homomorphic. So for homomorphic encryption, it roughly means that the encryption of the product of M and M prime can be derived from uh, multiplying the encryption of M and the encryption of M prime. And key homomorphic PIF is similar, but the homomorphism is done in the key space instead of the message space. So these properties may sound scary, but uh, actually they are, they, they are very simple and efficient uh, schemes that can realize these properties. OK, next, to validate is the Phoenix cyber attacks. The first thing to do is for the client is to remove the part that is encrypting the password. So it derives a partial cyber attack that is only encrypting the server PRF value. Next, it sends this uh, resulting cyber attacks, the username and the server nonce to the server. The server would check whether this username is requested too many times. If so, it will deny the request. 
And secondly, it will check the cipher text, whether the cipher text is valid. And if so, it will prove in zero knowledge that the cipher text is valid. So why it works? First of all, notice that nothing about the password is sent to the server. So the server is oblivious to the password. And secondly, the uh, PRF values are of the passwords are encrypted to the server. So the compromised kind cannot be decrypted by itself. And the only way to guess a password is to uh, perform an online attack. But the compromised kind cannot simply uh, guess by replacing, uh, by sending different usernames because the username, username and the server nonce is bound uh, is bind to the PIF value. So the only thing it can do is to guess the password, to remove the PIF value on the password, uh, and check with the server whether this partial ciphertext is valid. So last but not least, I would like to briefly mention how we can rotate uh, a ciphertext. So assume that the client and the server uh, jointly updates their keys, then the client can perform some computation which is independent of the password so as to update the ciphertext uh, which is encrypted under the brand new keys. Okay, so next I will pass to uh, Christoph who will talk about the evaluation and deployment. Okay, so um, for evaluation and deployment, um, first an outline. So. Um, the current password hardening recommendations with um, some memory hard functions, it's recommended to take computation time similar to up to one second. So if you are looking at the performance of such a password hardening scheme, um, we keep in mind that it's kind of acceptable to waste like one second of computation power on the uh, current recommendations. Um, we compared our scheme to um, all the other works mentioned. And this is possible because we have Python-based implementations and we set all of them up on a AV Amazon single core instance. So we have proper apples to apples comparison. Um, and the questions we want to address is um, how long does the user necessarily have to wait due to the introduction of our system? and how much computing power do we need to provide for such a crypto server in the back end? Uh, so is it like cost-wise feasible? And finally, we will talk about some practical implementations. Um, so how long does the user have to uh, wait for a login? And the answer kind of is here like eight milliseconds. So let's take some small look at the access. So we have HTTP, HTTPS, and some keep alive. So we did take a look at uh, encrypted and unencrypted uh, traffic. And of course, uh, setting up a new TC, uh, HTTP connection does cost something. Um, but for a large service, um, we guess that a standing connection between the client and the crypto server is maybe the most real realistic scenario. So HTTPS with keep alive. And this is a uh, comparison with the other schemes. So eight milliseconds plus round trip time, that doesn't sound too bad, especially if we are waiting for up to one second already for the uh, memory hard functions. So how many requests can we sustain on such a single core Amazon server? And the answer is something like 370, which is pretty good. Um, the enrollment where the user account gets created and um, is considerably cheaper, so we can do 1,500 of these, but, well, setting up a new account is relatively rare compared to users logging in, so not, certain, uh, not so interesting. So um, I guess, as we've seen, this is highly realistic in terms of performance. Let's take a look at some of the um, deployment issues that we, are, we might be interested in. So the first question we heard several times, uh, these memory hard functions kind of seem to be a good idea. Uh, can we uh, combine our password hardening scheme with uh, memory hard functions? And um, the answer is yes. If we are looking at the PRF that we are using, this is just a hash and an exponentiation. 
And it really doesn't matter if we are using some traditional hash function here like SHA-256 or one of the memory hard functions like argon2. And in that case, even if client and server are compromised at the same time by an adversary, um, he still has to overcome the additional costs of uh, the memory hard function. Um, so another question was availability. So we are adding another system to the whole setup. And what happens if the crypto server becomes unavailable? And as we have seen, um, the only state that the server holds per client is uh, one key pair and potentially some rate limiting information. So it's kind of easy to just have two of the crypto services and have the client connect to one that is available. So if uh, one of the services dies, um, the system just continues to work and the user doesn't notice anything. So we are doing rate limiting, right? So as you've seen, after too many queries, the crypto server will say, OK, uh, stop. Uh, you're not allowed to, to uh, do any more queries. So we may be afraid that this can lead to some uh, undesirable denial of service problems. Uh, the first one we are not actually um, all that concerned about. So if an attacker compromises the client, of course, the client may no longer be available to Alice. Um, but well, um, but we are but we are more concerned about is if there's an external attacker. So some attacker that is not the client and he is interacting with the client just like Alice, and he can block Alice from accessing the system. Um, in this part, of course, the problem is that the crypto server knows very little about its users. Um, because this information is only available at the client. Um, but on the other side, it's kind of useful uh, that the client is honest in this setting. So we are only interested in this rate limiting problem if the client is honest and kind of helping. So what you can basically do is if you're reaching some sort of soft limit, um, the server can tell the client that rate limiting is due soon. And then the client takes extra measures to keep the number of tries to the crypto server low. Um, we guess that, or we propose that something like an SMS or an email with a one-time token could be sent to uh, Alice out of band. And then Alice can use that to actually log in. So Alice can usually log in with her password. But if now the attacker tries several different passwords, and then the crypto server is informs the client that he should slow down. Um, the crypto server sends an SMS to Alice with a secret token. And next time the attacker tries another password, um, he can't go, do, uh, go forward anymore because he doesn't know the token. But Alice can still log in with the, uh, the secret token she received, for example, via SMS. So that helps us here. Um, last, last but not least, um, about upguard path. So in a current setting, the algorithm often is stored alongside the password hash, so you can upgrade for two different functions, for two different hash functions or stuff. Um, so you can just easily, um, like here we have Carol is still using an old algorithm and Alice and Bob with a new one. And now if you introduce password uh, hardening, you just replace, uh, add a new algorithm and use uh, the, that for the upgraded passwords and then upgrade each user as he logs into the system. So that for like for a real world deployment, there's an upgrade path from the old salted hash to a password hardening setting. So in summary, um, we have presented a strengthened model of uh, password hardening. Um, we presented also a formal treatment of key rotation and showed an uh, attack on the last scheme by Schneider et al. And we presented Phoenix, which we think is a very efficient scheme that uh, is useful for like making passwords stronger. And what we're currently work lo looking into is extending functionality like encrypting additional information in the database using this kind of service, um, anonymizing the end users so the server 
the crypto server can no longer track the pseudonyms of the people logging in unless it goes to rate limiting and well, there's this rate, uh, rate limiting denial of service stuff, so we are kind of looking into that to really bring, to, uh, maybe bring this into a actually working system that, yeah, that could uh, operate as an independent company, maybe even that. So, and I think that's it. Great, there must be some questions. Pretty interesting topic. Yeah, please. So, Jeremiah Blocky, Purdue Univer University. Uh, great work. Um, so, I had a question about uh, migration. Um, so, I was wondering if you had given any thought to uh, ways to migrate, maybe without even requiring users to log in. Um, is it possible or is that necessary that uh, users actually log in first? Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I think so. Uh, so actually, the the client can just do a linear scan on its database, and uh, so assuming that it is uh, currently storing a sorted hash, then you can just raise it to a random exponent, and then encrypt it and do all this stuff. Yeah, okay. So it's possible. Were, yeah. were you asking about migration or key rotation? Uh, migration. Because uh, actually, I was going to ask about key rotation because yeah. your key rotation scheme seems to require the user to log in. Uh, no. So, uh, the f actually, uh, so there are two phases in the key rotation. In the first phase, the client and the server will communicate and update their keys. And then in the second phase, the client will do a linear scan on its database to uh, update all the cipher text and without interacting with the end user and without interacting further with the server. Oh, you, you don't need to know the password for this? Yes, we don't need it. Okay. Cool. Great. Any other questions? I guess there's one one more question I'd like to ask, which is which is your uh, defense against online attacks. Mm -hmm. um, so you're defending against an attacker that tries to break Alice's account by trying lots of passwords. Yeah. But that's not how attackers work. I mean, attackers what they do is they fix the password, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then they try lots of users. So how how does the system actually deal with that? So that will also be taken care of, but although we didn't mention it uh, in the talk or in the paper, but uh, in this case, the crypto server can just uh, perform a global rate limiting instead of a per user rate limiting. Global, you mean what? Global rate limiting. Mean, meaning what? Uh, so, so maybe this uh, each user can only uh, submit a validate request uh, 10 times uh, a minute, and maybe the client can only submit uh, 1,000 requests <laughs> for all users, so there are maybe two limits, two thresholds for different things. Oh, oh, okay, I guess I'll, well, we could talk about that offline. Yeah, okay. Great. Okay, great, wonderful. Thanks a lot.